Who would have thought it? Common old sugar cane and corn could save us all. Save us from soaring oil prices and from a lot of those dreaded greenhouse gases. On the surface, it seems so simple. First, convert the crops to ethanol. Then make an easy, safe and cheap adjustment to your car engine. I'm talking less than $800 and you're away. This is no futuristic dream. In America, farmers are fast becoming the new fuel barons. In Brazil, cars have been happily running on ethanol for years. And wait till you see what it's done for pollution in the world's third largest city. But, and it's a big one, there is a hidden price to pay. This is the ethanol that we're talking about mixing with petroleum to fuel our transport. This is it. This is the, this, this is ethanol, pure. Is, it is pure ethanol. It smells like rocket fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Drink it, and it is rocket fuel. I promise you, Liz. <laughs> I could power more than my car. I suspect. Let's try it. <laughs> it's quite an imposing crop, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Biofuels are the new boom, turning crops into fuel. Former CSIRO executive David Lamb believes sugarcane could help save Australia from a major energy crisis. Yes, I think ethanol is important because it's the most immediately available, and I think it could make an enormous contribution in what could be a time of great crisis in our transport fuel dilemma. Australia's own oil reserves are fast running out. The price of petrol has doubled in the past five years, and our major cities are regularly choked by smog. We simply can't sustain our oil-dependent lives. In the worst case, oil could be as expensive as $8 a litre by 2018. It's the worst scenario, but it shows it. We'd better do something to make sure that within five years we've got some alternatives. So there's a crisis on the way. There's a crisis because we are so totally dependent on oil. And if without that oil, our lifestyle falls apart completely. If sugarcane is part of the solution to our fuel crisis, then we in Australia should be thanking our lucky stars. After all, this stuff has been the crop of choice for generations in Queensland and northern New South Wales. It is said to be the fastest growing plant on the planet. Up until now, we've been eating it and drinking it. Now it seems time we turn it into fuel for our cars. And if we don't, well, according to the experts, more fool us. But far from embracing this clean, green alternative, for years, car manufacturers and oil executives have convinced Australians that ethanol was the enemy and could ruin your engine. When ethanol was first mooted, the reaction was, will it damage my car? And I'm afraid the car industry wasn't terribly helpful here because the reaction from the official representatives of the industry was, if you use ethanol, it will void your warranty. Well, that's enough to scare anybody off from using ethanol. If I damage your car, I give you a brand new one. Auto engineer Sidney Mills believes Australians have been misled about ethanol. So you think it's better than petrol? It is, it is, it is. He's converted this car to run happily on 100% ethanol. OK, so it's a box and this yes. is it? This is the and box it's that easier than you might think. And inside the box, what we can have is an electronic system here, as we have like a small microprocessors. And it's telling the car that there's ethanol on board? Exactly. A simple black okay, box uh, is hooked up to the fuel injection like system for around $800. Now it's connected. Only to you to see how easy it is. And at two-thirds the price of petrol, you're saving money the moment you leave the garage. Australia, in terms of a biofuel, is a promised land. Uh, it's, a, it, it's a country that has everything.
Sydney should know. He comes from the world's ethanol superpower, Brazil. Here, three and a half million hectares of sugarcane are harvested for fuel every year. Simple as that. Sweet. South America's biggest country has been literally running on sugar for over 30 years. Where Australia has two ethanol plants, Brazil has 340. This year, they will pump out 25 billion litres of ethanol. This plant should not be called sugar cane, but energy cane. And it's funny because uh, at the same time, it's a very old crop, but it's so modern with so much technology being developed and to be developed, that that's, it's absolutely impressive. Here you have the petrol and uh, here we have the ethanol. It's uh, extremely cheaper. Eduardo Leo de Souza is the boss of Unica, the sugarcane industry's peak body. In Australia, ethanol has an image problem. People are frightened of it, they think it's inferior. How do you convince them that it's not? Well, f first thing, I would invite them to come to Brazil and learn more about our experience. Uh, we've been uh, testing this uh, field for 30 years. And the proof is literally in the air. Sao Paulo is the third largest city in the world with 20 million people and a traffic nightmare to match. But the air is amazingly clean now that all cars must run on a minimum of 25% ethanol. Almost every new car can run on 100% ethanol. You were ultimately the guinea pigs. Uh -huh. <laughs> you did the test run for the rest of the world. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And the rest of the world is now following Brazil's lead. No more so than the greatest gas-guzzling nation on Earth, America. Here, the ethanol industry is powered not by sugarcane, but by corn. It's corn for miles, Gerald. Yeah, it's a lot of corn. <laughs> I love corn. More corn, the better. You were saying that uh, pigs are reasonably intelligent. Oh, they are. They are intelligent, yeah. Not so long ago, it used to be corn-fed pigs bringing home the bacon for farmers like they're Gerald Tumbleson. They're very happy. They're inquisitive. They're just great little pigs. Now, it's corn-fed cars. America has recently taken over Brazil as the largest ethanol producer in the world. Do you think corn will become the new petrol in the Bowser? Corn is the new petrol right now. You've suddenly hit pay dirt. Oh, well, dirt's a, it's pay soil. <laughs> <laughs> You've hit gold. Yes, we have. This year, nearly half of all the corn America produces will be converted into fuel. Is it a concern then that if corn becomes so valuable in terms of turning it into fuel, that people will just grow corn for fuel? Oh, yeah, that would be a concern. Oh, I would, I would not raise it for that. No, no. Yeah, the people... possibility is there that that could happen? No, not for a long time. So is the ethanol story too good to be true? Well, according to some scientists, it is. Turning food into fuel comes at a real price. For years, the Amazon rainforest has suffered at the hands of man. But ironically, it is the clean, green biofuel industry that could cause it the most damage. The biofuels boom is soaking up so much of the world's arable land, it's being blamed for a world food shortage. And with America and Brazil's massive demand for ethanol crops growing, the ripple effect is being felt here in the rainforest. Farmers are carving deep into the Amazon to grow much needed food. The Amazon's currently being knocked down at a rate of about, just in Brazil, about seven football fields a minute, about 1.7 million hectares a year. And to put that in, say, for example, Australian terms, 
Brazil is currently destroying an area the size of the Wet Tropics World Heritage Area in North Queensland about every six months. And that's a direct result of biofuels. Biofuels is part of the story. It's not the only thing. There's other factors as well, but clearly biofuels are contributing to the destruction of the Amazon. Oh my God, I think they're birds of prey. I wonder if there's just one species. Tropical ecologist Bill Lawrence from the Smithsonian Institute is in awe of the Amazon. They are, they're bloody raptors. It's like a big migration of raptors. Holy smokes. Uh, oh, I see, different. wow. I've never been a bird watcher before, Bill. Yeah, this is actually just a tributary of the Amazon and it's 22 kilometers wide. It's vast yeah. and it's beautiful. His fear is for how much longer. And do we truly risk losing it? Absolutely. Yeah, you bet we, we risk losing it. It's being lost right now. So I guess this is what you've been talking about. Yeah, just a few years ago, this would have all been tropical rainforest, you know, as far as you can see in this huge sort of scorched landscape. And of course, all the biodiversity is gone. I mean, there's nothing that lives in this kind of sort of ecological Armageddon uh, out here. Earthworms, I mean, that's about the only thing this has got any conservation value for. The forest itself is being fragmented, it's being chopped up into pieces, and, and this creates all kinds of ecological problems for species, the jaguars, the pumas, the harpy eagles, the monkeys. Many species just can't survive. And just tell me, why do they bother keeping this tree? It's protected. They have to leave. They have to say that one. That's just ridiculous. I mean, they wiped everything out, and they observe one rule. That's right. It's legal to nuke the surrounding landscape. You just have to save that Brazil nut tree. This could be a big opportunity, provided we tick all the environmental boxes, but we need to explore it seriously. There is no easy fix, but the world is facing an inevitable fuel crisis and ethanol, for all its faults, offers a solution. We have all been lazy, yes, all of us, because we've been reluctant to, to recognize the crisis that's heading towards us, and we've been reluctant to really bite the bullet and do something serious about it. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.